Welcome to everyone. So uh, my name is Xavier Plo. I'm a principal business developer uh, belonging to the AWS Blue Edge uh, business unit uh, as part of AWS mainframe migration. We will be two presenters today. Jan is going to present himself uh, when he will start his section. What I'm going to present today is the uh, Blue Edge Refactor uh, solution, uh, which is one of the two uh, AWS mainframe migration and modernization uh, of legacy application solution. The way to engage with ourselves is either by going with a partner, which could be a GSI or an ISV partner, uh, or going directly to the AWS Blue Edge professional services. So uh, you can be uh, in contact with experts and experienced uh, people. This solution is not a tool. It's a complete end-to-end -end solution for making uh, application modernization, including the assess, the uh, rediscovery of all the uh, legacy dependencies, and making the transformation of that application into a Java Spring solution uh, before we deploy everything to the AWS Blue Edge Managed Runtime as part of the AWS Cloud or in another solution that could be runtime anywhere, meaning that you can deploy the solution on another premise. The uh, five pillars that uh, compose the Blue Edge solution are based on the uh, code base of the uh, legacy uh, application that the customer is going to deliver to us. And you will see in the demonstration the way we can collect the source code and assess it. That code base first needs to be assessed in order to check that nothing is missing, that we get all the artifacts thanks to the relearn of the dependencies between the artifact and the persistency, the input file, the output file, and so on. So we are going to check that the code base is fully complete and there will be no surprise in the middle of the project when we are making the transformation. So the code base is going to be modernized as a, a vertical holistic uh, stack, including the database, meaning that we are going to modernize any kind of persistency from the legacy platform. Uh, whatever is the format, could be a relational database like DB2, or it could be a VSAM file or whatever, it's going to end up into a relational schema here. The second pillar is a functional equivalence. The functional equivalence is the way we are going to validate the result of that transformation. The transformation is a like-for-like -like transformation. We are not going to alter the way the data are accessed or processed. The functional algorithm will be kept intact. And the technical is going to be completely re-architectured in a model-to-model -model transformation, in a pattern-to-pattern -pattern transformation. I mean, architecture patterns, also making a kind of re-architecture of that application into a three-tier application that is going to be composed of a presentation layer, a backend layer, and a persistency layer. The third pillar is equally the same to the functional equivalence, but apply to non-functional uh, requirements such as the performance. And we engage with this process to produce an application which is going to behave in terms of performance the same as the legacy one, meaning that the batch elapse is going to be uh, the same or better, that the response time to an online interface is going to be the same or better, as well as for the screen-based scenario. Then the fourth pillar is based on the quality of the source code because we are building modern applications that need to be maintained for many years again and to be evolved for uh, enhancing the uh, business agility of the application owner. So the idea is that we get as an input the requirement of the customer on the coding style, on the naming convention that we can enrich in order to make more meaningful development and variables and class name and so on. We can also have additional refactoring that we inject as part of the transformation process. So we get the base quality of source code that can be controlled automatically using the Sonar Cube tool and for which uh, we are going to agree with the customer and their technicians the Sonar Cube profile we will apply, so the list of rules that will control the result on a factual basis. And the fifth point is the test coverage. This is an indicator that we always monitor all along the transformation process 
and the validation uh, strategy. So we can control the quality of the data set and the scenarios that we receive as an, an input and that we execute as an output. And I will take that last point in order to develop how we prove the functional equivalence and we validate the uh, result of that transformation. We are recording on a copy of the uh, legacy platform the uh, test case that we want to uh, consider in order to validate the application that has been produced. We simply dump the legacy database just before we execute a scenario. Then uh, we dump also a second data set immediately after the execution of that scenario. And those two data sets will be both modernized using the Blue Edge DB modernization tool. And we will take the first data set in order to initialize the database and the persistency layer in order to reproduce the same scenario on the modern environment and obtain into the persistency layer the result of the execution of that scenario that will be automatically compared with the other data set that has been also modernized. The purpose of the Blue Edge Compare tool is to be able to automatically compare any kind of format of data, whatever is the encoding, whatever is the way you store them. So it could be a relational way, uh, comparing the colon and the lines, uh, the records. It could be a non-relational way, such as input file, output file that are encoded in UBCD or in a complex format or in a structured format or in a flat format or in a report. So it can compare any kind of format. And in order to do so, uh, we implement uh, some continuous cycle, like uh, an integration platform that will uh, automatically, every time there is some new features pushed to the uh, output, uh, apply the test case in an automated manner so we can automatically report and roll back the result to the tool, which is Blue Insight, controlling the progress of the project. These cycles, as a DevOps platform, can be then handed over with the future maintenance team. So we go from a large mainframe investment to pay-as-you-go consumption, uh, meaning that you are going to pay for the power and the duration you consume the infrastructure. We are also going to transform the persistency layer as a relational database that is going to be by default Postgre-based. So it could be the Amazon RDS for Postgre, or it could be Amazon Aurora. But in case the customer absolutely wants to keep some other database, uh, as long as it is a relational one, we can go for Oracle database, DB2, or whatever. The business rule contains into the uh, uh, implementation uh, legacy source code of that application is going to be modernized as a backend uh, implemented in Java on top of the Spring framework and that you can package a Spring Boot application and then later on deploy in a distributed manner, leveraging a lightweight container approach and a multi-node topology to deploy this into production. So you can leverage the service like, such as ECS or EKS, but you can also expose the backend in a modern manner, in a modern protocol as web service or REST API, leveraging the Amazon API gateway or an alternative Nginx if you don't want to go with a service of AWS. For the uh, messaging broking system, you can adopt the Amazon SQS or Amazon MQ, MQ in replacement to any kind of dependency on a middleware from the legacy platform or go for an alternative approach, which is going to be RabbitMQ as an open source framework if you don't want to go for the AWS service. This backend layer is exposed to a front end because we also modernize the screens, and those screens are going to be modernized as an Angular native application generating HTML page that can be consumed by a browser on the client side, and everything can be packaged using Bootstrap. The way we, we do is uh, by first. Uh, making an assessment. So the, the assessment really start with a very simple questionnaire of 25 questions. So we can uh, deliver a raw order of magnitude, a ROM estimate for the du budget and the duration of the project. So this way we can check we are in the ballpark of what uh, the customer has in mind in terms of duration and spending. Then once it's done, we collect the source code of the legacy application in order to automatically assess 
this source code to check nothing is missing. So we are identifying the missing artifact possibly, and then we iterate until the completion of that code base. And the POC scope that we will use in order to demonstrate and showcase the transformation process, as well as confirm the uh, validation criteria on which we want to agree for the full project. So this process of making an assess is measured in weeks. The assessment itself, which is automated, is measured in days, and in terms of effort, it's measured in hours. And the whole purpose of every single step of this transformation process is to collect enough information during the assess so we can engage into the next step, which is called mobilize, in a fix for the fixed price engagement based on milestone and deliverables for which we can uh, pronounce the validation based on validation criteria that are fully documented and factual measured using tools. And the budget is driven by the number of lines of source code that compose that application. So this is the technical dimension and the number of test cases that we will need in order to prove the result of that transformation. This is the functional dimension. During the mobilize, we will of course deliver the POC, so the proof of concept. We can also discuss the integration architecture. Uh, so uh, this application certainly need to in be integrated with already modern application or to integrate with some uh, elements that are component of the uh, uh, information system of the customer, such as an active directory or an LDAP that is going to replace the uh, legacy RACF solution that we are not going to transform or emulate. So what we can do is to integrate it in a modern manner by injecting some dependency, such as the audit mechanism, the tracing mechanism, the logging mechanism, the authentication mechanism, the security mechanism. So all those things can be directly injected at any point of the application that is being produced. We will also discuss about the topology to distribute this workload on a multi-node environment into the production platform and size the uh, cost of that future production platform in the AWS cloud. So this phase, again, has, has a main objective to collect all the information so we can engage on a fixed price based on milestone and deliverables and a fixed duration for delivering the full transformation project that is going to be articulated as a mass migration to produce the modern application, plus a mass testing, so handing over the modern application to a testing team that will take care of its integration, system test, performance test, user acceptance test with the final customer and with the application owner before they can do the real solves of the uh, cutover and the go live including the, migra the live data migration. So now I'm going to hand over to Jan. Uh, thank you, Xavier. Um, hello, everyone. So my name is Jan Kindelberger. I'm working as a specialist solution architect, and I'm part of a worldwide team working on mainframe migration and modernization to uh, AWS. So le let's introduce very quickly the uh, mainframe modernization service. AWS announced at reInvent 2021 and made available in June this year the AWS mainframe modernization service. The main goal of this service is to simplify and accelerate the customer mainframe migration project. This service is made up of a set of tools for um, planning, migrating, modernizing, and running. And for the running part, we are introducing a managed uh, service runtime, which means we are going to take care and facilitate the implementation of a solution to cope with the security, high availability, performance, and system management requirements. And for this demo, we will focus on the refactoring one uh, with the Blue Edge solution. So you see on this slide the main phases of the mainframe modernization process, and for each phase, we position the tools or than the solution that are available. So during the demo, you, I will, um, we, will, we will highlight most of them. For the analysis phase, we will use and show you a Blue Insight. For the develop phase, we will show you the developer for Blue Edge. And for the deploy and the operate, we will show you how um, to deploy and run the refactored application to the AWS Blue Edge Manage Runtime. So let's go with the end-to-end -end demo and let's start with uh, the home page of the uh, AWS console. So from this home page, I'm selecting the mainframe modernization service and land to the uh, get started page. 
Um, I'm choosing the uh, refactor with Blue Edge option and I am uh, redirected to the uh, Get Started with Blue Edge homepage. And from here, uh, I'm choosing the first step, Analyze and Refactor. And I'm, uh, I'm clicking to the uh, button Continue in Blue Insight. And by clicking this button, I'm, uh, I, I land uh, to the main uh, homepage of Blue Insight. So now I will hand over Xavier that will describe the analysis and the refactor uh, part of the demonstration. So uh, in the video demonstration I'm going to make now, uh, we will see how we consume the different features of the Blue Insight tool, which is a SaaS tool uh, that doesn't need any kind of installation setup or whatever. We just need to upload the source code into it and we will be able to do this using some shared space. We will see that but also we will uh, get a direct access to the automated assessment uh, features that are all grouped under the code base. And then we will go to the transformation center to show how we can do the transformation for real. And what is key here is that anything I'm going to do can be done like uh, by someone having only the knowledge of the process. There is no need of having a skill set on the mainframe. There is no need of having any kind of skill set on the past and the legacy application in terms of functional understanding. We are now on the landing page of Blue Insight and we are about to create a shared space so the customer can make the deposit of the application source code in order we can assess it. This uh, shared space is simply created by the customer itself using the, its uh, login account and uh, creating a project of type share space. Now this uh, share space being created, we can easily select it and upload uh, into this uh, space the application source code as a zip file. And this zip file will be then uh, accessible by the people that are uh, nominated by the customer himself. So it could be a GSI individual, it could be an AWS Blue Edge individual, it could be the person of their choice. Uh, once this uh, shared space has been created and the source code uploaded, then uh, we can go to create what we call a code base in order to uh, make the assessment. So the same uh, principle as for uh, creating a shared space, you create a project, but this, ta this time it's a type of code base and uh, you describe uh, this project and then you attach to it the uh, uploaded source code from the shared space. The process of creating that shared space is going to automatically initialize some dashboard where we will be able to see the number of lines source code that compose this uh, um, code base. And then uh, we will also able later on in this demonstration to activate some other predefined dashboard to monitor the progress of the project or to monitor artifacts that compose this application and so on. So then we can go to the asset and uh, sort them by the number of lines source code. So we get the principal technology implementing this application. We are now going to launch the classification in case some artifacts get a bad extension. So the tool is going to look inside each of the artifacts to detect their content and uh, re-classify them in case. Then uh, we are going to uh, go for the launch of the complexity analysis which is going to immediately give us uh, the cyclomatic complexity of every single artifact uh, and uh, they will be uh, displayable on a graph uh, so we can immediately spot the most uh, complex ones that are part of this code base without any effort. For that purpose, we are going to activate one of the dashboards, which is the cyclomatic complexity graph, and uh, we will see the result where the different artifacts are distributed on the graph and we can zoom on some of them. We can also uh, put a mouse over on some others in order to get their name and immediately uh, spot the one that are the most complex and for which there may be a uh, focus of attention. Uh, now we will go back to the uh, asset uh, management uh, in order that uh, we are going to launch the uh, dependency graph analysis. 
Let's go back to the asset tab and explore the query bar and see how we can use it in order to uh, select some uh, artifacts. And it's going to be the same principle that we will be able to use in any kind of tab uh, of the Blue Insight tool as the query bar exists everywhere. So we will also be able to query a graph, for instance. So here we are querying the uh, name of the artifact. So in order to select the one that contains uh, the uh, string GCL, we can also query uh, by the file type. Uh, which is like uh, something uh, which is going to be a GCL script. Uh, and uh, because the uh, GCL extension might be wrong, and thanks to the uh, reclassification, uh, it has been changed to something else uh, regarding the content. So here we are selecting the uh, uh, BMS screen. Uh, we can also select the GCL. So now we calculate the uh, dependency um, between the different artifacts, so which module, COBOL module is calling which COBOL module, which COBOL module is accessing any kind of file or uh, tables or views and so on, and uh, which GCL script is calling which COBOL module as well. Uh, so it means that we get the interdependency between all the artifacts. Uh, these interdependencies are going to be useful in order to uh, modernize consistent uh, work package of that code base and uh, those work package will be determined by uh, querying the graph from an entry point that could be a screen, that could be a GCL implementing a job, that could be uh, a COBOL module. So the color uh, depend on the file type, the color of the link depend on the type of links so or the type of call that can be made and you can adapt them by uh, uh, changing the settings of that. You can also uh, get some uh, facility in order to uh, display the whole graph or part of it and select some uh, subscope of the uh, code base by uh, just uh, using the mouse. Uh, you get a mouse over where you can have the property and the information of a given node. Uh, so this way you can uh, recognize the type. Uh, you will be able to uh, select some of the node uh, one by one uh, like this and then extract uh, this node as an entry point for instance for uh, considering this is the test case that we are going to uh, modernize. So it's going to be our test case number one. Then going to be considered as this COBOL module plus all the uh, sub uh, dependencies according to the uh, dependency analysis that has been done. So we drill down into the graph by querying it uh, from the parent to the children and the children of the children and so on up to the point that we reach the bottom of the graph which could be the uh, input files, output files, the views and uh, uh, anything which is persistency. So once the sum graph is complete we can then select all the element of this graph and uh, put them uh, into, uh, attach uh, to them a label and this label is going to uh, get the name of this uh, test case for instance. So we have group uh, virtually uh, with the same label, all those artifacts under uh, a single name. Uh, so here we can see the uh, edit box in order to uh, create uh, the label and uh, this label uh, will be used later on in order to uh, identify uh, the scope into the graph by having a kind of uh, envelope which is going to be a color that graphically can uh, be represented and uh, we will see the potential overlap that we have with some other test case meaning that some of the common uh, artifacts uh, will be uh, having several test cases and several execution paths then. Uh, so it means that a given artifact is always modernized the first time with the first test case it is considered, but then it can be tested more than once uh, because you receive some other test case later on and this artifact was in common with another test case. So that's what we are going to see here now. We create a second test case subgraph uh, and again same logic. We are going to go uh, drill down until we reach the bottom of the graph and we will add a label on all those nodes and uh, then I will show you uh, how the graph can represent the two different uh, labels uh, in the uh, overall uh, vision that we have in the uh, main graph. So here we add the label number two.
and go back to the main graph so we can see the two labels and the potential overlap we have between the two test cases. So we are going to activate the uh, coloring for the labels and here we see we are going to zoom on this and we can see that some artifacts are in common with the two test cases. So uh, we can also complement and uh, do the same uh, Case, test case by test case. Uh, generally speaking, the, what we are doing is that uh, we are querying the graph in order to identify what uh, candidate to be an entry point. So we select here all the screens, for instance, and we are going to extract them into a subgraph. And uh, this is going to identify the uh, screen based scenario uh, subscope of the code base. And we will review this list of screen with the uh, customer in order to validate the one that are really in the functional scope definition because they are willing to modernize them and they are not obsolete or deprecated. And then same logic, uh, we drill down into the uh, graph in order to calculate all the uh, subsequent dependencies of those entry points. So we get the complete uh, vision of the scope of the uh, part that, which is screen based in this uh, code base. And we get the volume, lines of source code, number of artifacts, and so on. So we get some metrics attached to the online. So we can uh, estimate now a potential duration for uh, validating uh, this subscope. We are going to do almost the same, but now interesting ourselves to the GCL script as an entry point. So it's going to be the batch subscope of this application. And again, we extract that into another graph. So we get a vision on it and we are going to uh, drill down into the dependencies. Uh, and uh, we are going to position a work package uh, not a label as we made uh, earlier for the test case, but a work package in order to group those artifacts together under the same um, under the same uh, uh, envelope in order that we can consider then later on the way we could envision to do that project or that POC uh, by uh, putting a start date and an end date on each of the work package. So as a result, this application will be vertically sliced, uh, starting with the entry point, so uh, which correspond to uh, a single feature for each of them or a single batch. And uh, then we, we can also group uh, the different uh, uh, entry point in subware package, decomposing the batch scope uh, by chain, for instance, or decomposing the uh, online uh, screen uh, um, scope uh, by grouping the screens per functionality or per uh, business process scenario. So we get some work package that are consistent and we build uh, step by step the uh, testing strategy of this project. Uh, so now we go um, to query uh, the asset by the work package name we just assigned. So to see that uh, we can uh, select the exact name of the work package, including the view, the tables, the input files. So it means that we now also have the uh, definition of the data set that is associated with this uh, subscope. Going to the management uh, view, uh, we can uh, see the work package we just created with the respective content and volume. So they are approximately the uh, same uh, uh, size and we are going to assign them a start date and an end date. Uh, so we are building this way, the way we would like to uh, do the uh, implementation. So the timeline of that validation of once the transformation has been done. Uh, we can uh, even associate that with calendar event. So this way uh, we get automatically uh, the, uh, uh, the planning which is uh, uh, made with some milestone and uh, that are predefined and we can um, schedule them with the customer in order they can testimony by making their respective uh, UAT uh, phase. So some of the scope is uh, uncategorized because not belonging to a work package. So uh, usually that could be at the end of that work a candidate for pruning, meaning that uh, it's uh, in the code base but uh, obsolete source code because it's not uh, uh, determined by the content of any work package that we have uh, discussed with the customer. Uh, 
Uh, now we can build the uh, timeline and the timeline is going to be saved as the uh, POC timeline for instance, POC scope timeline and then here we see that uh, the uh, progress of the uh, transformation can be automatically uh, rolled up into the tool. So with the data set, the scenario will be there and some dashboard can be associated with them so that the customer can see in real time the result of the validation of that transformation following the timeline for the validation. So there is no time spent in PowerPoint or in Excel spreadsheet prior to any kind of steering committee. We just uh, use the tool and uh, connect it to the uh, uh, CI in place in order to roll up the uh, CT result and uh, everything is seen. So here we are inviting as a guest someone. Uh, this person will be able to uh, see uh, the content that we determine by naming in terms of profile the module he can see or possibly edit if we want this uh, being possible. And this person will not be like uh, uh, seeing all what we are doing. Uh, so we might have some things that we want to keep private because they are part of the internal work of the team delivering the project. And some of the parts are absolutely shared with the uh, final customer for the steering committee content purpose, for instance. So uh, here uh, we will see also that we can destroy this project at the end of the project, meaning that uh, no uh, data will be kept or left after once the uh, service has been delivered and uh, according to the uh, agreement we have we uh, completely uh, uh, destroy everything. In this last part of the demonstration, we are going to see how we can obtain the Java source code as a result of the uh, automatic transformation. So the transformation center uh, need to uh, be created as a project and this project will be based on the code base on which we have made the uh, analysis, the assessment and the uh, vertical decomposition into a list of test case features that has been grouped uh, as per uh, the work package are composed depending on the agreement you have with the customer and the type of application you are facing. So here we reference the code base, so we hinder it from all of this work in the transformation center uh, project. So we can see here we will have the same logic with some other uh, dashboard, but those dashboard will be more oriented on the status of the transformation itself, uh, depending on the three phases of the transformation that are the, uh, re, um, the transform, the refactor, and the generate uh, of the Java source code. So here we are going to configure uh, the uh, context of that generation of source code uh, by uh, making some property being customized. So obviously the name of the project will be part of it. Uh, the uh, uh, type of uh, application transformation we are making, so meaning that we might uh, envision to get a Unicode application as a result. So we are going to change the uh, type of encoding and uh, we are also going to uh, customize the uh, class pass uh, for generating the uh, source code, the Java source code, uh, so it can be adapted to the uh, customer uh, uh, requirements, for instance. So uh, once those properties have been selected, then uh, we can uh, value them, uh, changing their default value uh, by editing them from the uh, UI. So here uh, we are going to name that um, M2, like mainframe modernization, and uh, we are going to define uh, the target encoding as being ASCII instead of uh, being something uh, legacy, and uh, we are going to define the uh, class path for generating the source code as com Amazon uh, dot uh, webinar. Once this is done, uh, we can go to the input uh, of the uh, uh, in the asset, and uh, then we are going to use the same uh, logic that was the one we were using in the code base in order to query the list of assets and get a sub list of them. And here, what we want to do is to uh, modernize uh, the work package we've been creating, so the batch and the screens. 
and do not modernize the rest because we agreed with the customer that this is not part of the POC scope and it can be discarded. So now we are going to uh, send all those artifacts, including their dependencies, to uh, the uh, Velocity engine. So it's going to go through the three different phases of the transformation, the transform, the refactor, and the generation of the source code. So we are going to pick the uh, version of the uh, Blue Insight, uh, Blue Edge Velocity engine, uh, to which uh, we want to send those artifacts and the different phase, and then run. Result of the run can be seen in the Velocity tab under the uh, version of the engine that has been used. Uh, so we can see the result has been produced. We are going to explore what we get as a first step. So we can see that there is a red spot on the transform here for the batch. Uh, something went wrong during the transformation and uh, we might be interested by understanding why this transformation is not fully successful and why this BMS screen here has been failing. So we are going to go to the issue tab and uh, uh, query the database uh, which has been populated with the result of the transformation. Here we are going to select all the issue we get for the transform and uh, see them. And we will see immediately the uh, reason and the root cause for that fail. So obviously we got a double dash on this line, which is uh, not uh, compliant with uh, the syntax. So now what we are going to do is to query the assets and uh, let's select this artifact, which is the cause of our issue. Go to the line we have and uh, we are going to make a new version of that artifact in order to work around the fact that uh, this artifact is not having a correct syntax and then we are going to save it as a new version that we can later on revert in case we receive an update from the customer here what we want to do is just to check that the result will be producible and there will be no other issue by just fixing it uh, temporarily so here we are putting just an information uh, on the new version so we can explain it. And we are going to select this artifact and send it again to the Velocity engine in order to... So it's not the whole code base that we are going to transform again, it's just this one with all the dependencies that goes with it in order that we can check, we can obtain uh, a successful result without uh, a fail in the middle. So this being process, we can now go to the velocity result and we see that there is a new run that has been done. This run is partial and only containing the result of it. Uh, so the transform seems to pass. So we go to next step, which is the refactor. So as we have defined no refactor script uh, uh, yet, uh, it means that it's going to be skip step and the uh, generation of the uh, source code uh, is obtained. Um, generation, so success, everything is successful. And uh, we can uh, download uh, the result of uh, the transformation. And the result of the transformation is going to be downloaded as generated uh, source uh, scope, including the, the POM and all the files that needs to be, uh, uh, that we need to have in order to compile, build, and package by default this uh, generation, this new target uh, modern application. So I can download that by selecting the, uh, um, the result, and then we will go to the zip file, opening it in order to explore the content. Before we explore the content of this uh, zip file, we are going to see how we can add a refactor script because some fail might be because there is a specific pattern uh, that is uh, implemented by this in-house application. Uh, now we are in the zip file where we can see the uh, generated output. So uh, we get uh, the uh, three tier application decomposed as entities, uh, UI layer, and the backend service layer exposed to the UI. 
and uh, we go to the Java source code, which is a Java Spring application that has been implemented, where each of the module, a COBOL module, is now implemented as a, a Spring Boot service that can be packaged and having an implementation class that we will briefly open to see the generated source code as a sample. So you can see the source code is commented and easy to read and correctly uh, maintainable. So thanks, Xavier. So now let's let's move to uh, the second part of the demo. Um, we have a Java source code that has been generated by the uh, Transformation Center. We need now to compile and build the artifacts that will be deployed to uh, the Java application server. So I will use the IDE for Blue Edge to compile the Java code. I will deploy the WAR files to a local Tomcat application server to perform my unit test. And finally, I will package an application archive that will be used for the third part of the demo, which will be uh, the execution of the refactored application in the managed runtime environment. In the context of the mainframe modernization service, the IDE for Blue Edge developer is running under AppStream. In order to create the AppStream fleet and the stack for the IDE for Blue Edge, we will use a CloudFormation template. In fact, the fleet is made up of several app blocks. Each app block represents a virtual hard disk containing the application files and the binaries necessary to launch the application that uh, we're going to use. So five uh, CloudFormation templates has been provided and you can find them in the documentation to create the fleet and those uh, app blocks. So let's go to uh, CloudFormation. You can see those templates here. So one for pgAdmin uh, app blocks, one for the Eclipse ID, one for the browser, one for the Blue Edge shared libraries, and a last one for some development tools. So I already uh, created and executed those templates and uh, uh, created the fleet and the stack. So now we're going to go to AppStream and launch the stack of the ID for Blue Edge. So I select the uh, M2 Amps AppStream Elastic Stack. And in the action menu, I will create a streaming URL. I enter my user ID and the expiration of the URL and then click the uh, Get URL button. Um, so then uh, I can launch this URL either uh, in the browser or in a fat client, and I will choose here to use uh, the client. So here we are. Then the first uh, step is to set up the Blue Edge runtime. And by setting this Blue Edge runtime, you will uh, get all the Blue Edge libraries required to build uh, the application. So I will open a, a terminal window. And then you need to launch the shell called install velocity runtime uh, .sh. This shell will get all the libraries and will populate your .m2 folder. So let's wait a little bit. Uh, the completion of the script uh, it will take two or three minutes. When completed, we will then launch the Eclipse IDE and uh, uh, we will have to retrieve the Java project that has been generated through the Transformation Center. And basically, the uh, generated Java project will have to be stored in a source code management system to be then cloned by the developer. And for the sake of time and simplicity, I already created a code commit repository and I uploaded the, the Java code. So coming from the transformation center to this code uh, commit repository. So the first thing to do when we will start the Eclipse IDE is to clone uh, this uh, code commit repository. So let's wait at uh, the completion of the shell. I will uh, pause the video and come back when uh, it's completed. It's done. Now we are ready to launch the IDE. So let's go. We will have to uh, then select a directory for the workspace. We can keep the default as is. And, and then a standard Eclipse environment is opening again. Wait a, a minute to get the IDE ready. Now from the Eclipse environment, I have to import a Git project. I select the clone URI. 
I enter the URI uh, from my code commit repository, then I enter my user and my password, and now I'm cloning and importing my Java source code. As then the idea we will build all the different projects. It will take one or two minutes. Uh, you see the progress bar at the bottom of the screen. And at the end, we will not have any error. Here it is. You can see the various projects, the entities, the service, the web, and the tool projects without any error anymore. So now uh, I will uh, build the WAR files for the front end and the back end. Uh, I will use Maven, Maven for this. I will right click um, to the POM XML and select Run as Install Maven. Um, Maven is a, is a build automation tool which makes the build process much easier. Um, Maven builds a project using its POM, so the project of model, and using also a set of plugins. So let's see the console. Um, when the um, Maven project completes, uh, we will end up with two files, one for the web application, the card demo web.war, uh, and another for the backend or the service named the uh, card demo uh, service.war. So and um, now it's complete. Uh, you can see that the builds uh, have been uh, successful. And uh, um, now we will deploy those artifacts to Tomcat, but before I need to configure the uh, Tomcat uh, application server and configure the access to uh, the database. So for the sake of time for the demo, I already loaded the data uh, within the Aurora uh, database using uh, the script provided uh, by the Transformation Center. And I will open the uh, Tomcat configuration, meaning the server XML. Here you see the uh, URL to access the Aurora database that I already created. And now I need to copy the uh, Tomcat configuration files I updated in my IDE into the local Tomcat uh, application server directory. I need uh, uh, to configure the module that I will deploy to uh, Tomcat and I will install three modules, the service, uh, the uh, front end, and uh, uh, I will do also the uh, guidewalk uh, uh, framework. So here, this is the front end and now uh, I need to do the guidewalk. Here we are. And now uh, I can start the um, Tomcat application uh, server. Uh, it will take a couple of minutes, so let me uh, show you uh, the console. Uh, and I will uh, pause the video and come back when it's finished. So here we are, the uh, Tomcat application server uh, started. Uh, so now we get our refactored application up and running in our local Tomcat application server. Now we are going to test uh, locally the application and uh, I'm going to open the browser and access the application locally. So for the URL, I enter the uh, uh, localhost 8080 for the port and the slash demo path at the entry point of the web application. Here it is. So now I will trigger the initial transaction called CC00. Then I'm logging in using my user ID uh, password. Will access the list of cards. Then I can see the details of one of the cards. Um, I will return to the initial menu and uh, I can uh, initiate uh, a payment if needed. Um, as you can see, the look and feel of, of, of the new refactored application is exactly the same than the 3270 uh, application, but now it's, run, it's running uh, using uh, modern technologies like uh, Angular and Java. Oh, I'm happy with my uh, refactored application. All my unit tests are done. I need to deploy the application to uh, the manager and time environment. And in order to do so, I need to package my application in a zip file that will be uh, pushed to S3.
So there is, uh, or there are two different ways to do it: a manual way or an automated way using a CI/CD pipeline uh, that will build, package, and deploy the application. I will do it uh, manually in order to show you all the steps required to deploy the application. Again, uh, those steps could be easily automated with a CI/CD pipeline. So I prepared a directory containing uh, some configuration file, the JIX data to be loaded into the database, and uh, those files. Uh, uh, came from the transformation center. I need now to package uh, the two WAR files, meaning the front end and the back end application. So I will create a web app uh, directory. Here it is. So I create this folder, uh, web app, and uh, um, okay, click. Next, and then I will have to copy the two WAR files, so the web WAR file to this directory. Here it is, and then I will copy the other one, the one from uh, the service. Here it is, to uh, this web uh, app directory. And uh, from here, uh, I need to zip all of them together, so I will export it uh, as uh, uh, an archive and uh, I will give a name to uh, this archive. Okay, here it is. So now I need to copy this uh, zip file to S3, so I will open a terminal window. I will go to uh, the directory where I generated the uh, application zip file. And now I'm going to issue an AWS S3CP command to copy uh, the zip to S3. Uh, I copy the package to my M2 Blue Edge demo US East 1 bucket under the card demo folder. Okay, so we are down now with the Blue Edge for developer part. And now let's move to uh, the last part of the demo. And let's summarize what we did so far. Um, Xavier generated the Java source code using a Blue Insight and the Transformation Center. I compiled the Java code and generated two WAR files, one for the front end and another one for the back end. We tested locally the new refactored application and generated an archive, including the WAR file and some config file, to an S3 uh, bucket. Now, we will create a Blue Edge Manage Runtime environment. We will create the application definition and deploy the application to this runtime environment. And finally, we will test the application running in this Manage Runtime environment. And this is uh, what I'm going to show you during the last part of the demo. So I will start by connecting to the AWS console and we will have a look at the package we just deployed to the S3 bucket. Uh, let's open the Cardemo folder. And uh, uh, let's see that the card demo app zip is in there. Here it is. Uh, this is a file we just copied from uh, the uh, ID. So now let's go to the main frame modernization service getting started page. And let's select uh, the uh, deploy uh, option. The first thing to do is the creation of the manage uh, runtime environment. So um, let's uh, create uh, this runtime environment. Um, let's click continue, enter the name of the environment. So let's say Blue Edge Card Demo Runtime. Here, let's uh, uh, then select the uh, runtime, uh, the Blue Edge uh, as the engine. Uh, click Next. Uh, let's go with a standalone environment, but you can choose the high available environment if you wish. Let's keep the M5 uh, large instance. Uh, uh, check the box, uh, allow application deployed in the environment to be publicly accessi accessible because we will access the application from the browser. We're going to select all the subnet. Uh, I will keep the default. Uh, I do not need to attach any storage, so click Next. Uh, and then I click Create the environment. Uh, so now um, our environment is available. Uh, the next step is uh, to define the application. So I click to application, click uh, create application. I will give a name to the application, so Cardimo app. Uh, I select the Blue Edge engine and I click next. 
Now, so this is where I need to define uh, the application and it, its uh, associated resources. It's done through a JSON file. So I will copy the JSON I prepared and go through it with you to explain what's in it. So first, um, you provide the info about the application uh, server that will run the application, meaning uh, the fact that it's Tomcat, the port uh, to access the application, here the 8194. Then uh, you define uh, where is located the package of your application, meaning the zip file we copied uh, to the S3 bucket. You can see the card demo app zip. Uh, file uh, with a variable that define uh, my S3 uh, uh, bucket. The S3 bucket is defined here. You see my bucket M2 uh, Blue Edge uh, demo US list one. And lastly, the information about uh, Bluesam. So Bluesam required requires a Redis cluster, so there is the host name of the cluster. And most important, you can see the reference to a secret that defines the access to uh, the database where the VSAM files are stored. So I created this secret uh, up front and get the IRN and put it uh, in the uh, JSON file. So we have all uh, the information here related to the application that will run inside uh, Tomcat. So we can uh, now click next. And then I create the application and uh, you see that the application status is now uh, creating and now move to available. Uh, now to deploy the uh, application to the environment we just created. And uh, uh, to do so, uh, you select the app in the action menu, you choose deploy application. I select the Blue Edge Cardemo runtime environment and uh, here click deploy. Uh, the status of the application is now deploying. Uh, it will take a couple of minutes uh, uh, to be ready. I pause the video. Here we are now, the statue is ready. Next step is uh, uh, to start the application. So I will select the app and in the menu, uh, action menu, I will choose start the app. Uh, the application is starting and now uh, uh, after uh, a couple of uh, uh, minutes, it's uh, uh, moved to uh, running. So next uh, step now is uh, uh, to access the application running in the manage uh, runtime from the browser. So we need to get the DNS to access the application. You can see also here that we can check that everything has been started properly by accessing the log. There is a link to the CloudWatch log. Here it is. From here, you can see that uh, everything uh, um, has been uh, started, uh, uh, deployed and started properly. Uh, let's copy uh, the uh, DNS uh, host name and uh, uh, what we need to do is to open a browser window, copy the DNS um, and uh, uh, the port to access uh, the web application. Now here I am, I can um, trigger the initial transaction, the CC00 and uh, logging to uh, uh, the application with my user password and uh, like uh, uh, Previously, I can test my application with the list of cards and get the detail of the card. Here it is. So this is uh, the end of uh, uh, this part. You can see now my uh, application, my refactored application running uh, on the manage runtime. Thank you, Jan, again for all those uh, demonstration and uh, uh, interactive uh, deployment of this application. I would like to uh, summarize that uh, the tool that we need in order to uh, modernize this application uh, are also used and will be the same tool that we will be using after we go live for maintaining and operating this application meaning that the way the ecosystem of transformation tool has been uh, designed is uh, to start making the transformation and the validation of the result by working as if we were already in the future ecosystem after the go live for maintaining and operating this application meaning that the tool that we use for the develop, the deploy and the operate stage of this transformation process are exactly the same than the tool that will be used for after the go live.
for maintaining and evolving that application. Meaning that uh, we are having a setup of tool that we already experiment during the transformation project for the purpose of validating the result of that modernization. Thank you very much for having listening to us and you can contact us at any point of time and we are very happy to uh, present you and develop any kind of uh, deep dive understanding of each of the steps that has been presented today in the context of an opportunity. Thank you.